So in this video, I'm going to be freeze drying a bunch of peaches. These are in season right now. We absolutely love them. I think this year we bought 140 pounds. We jarred or canned, I think it was 60 or 70 jars of them. We make peach cobbler with these all the time, but I also love these just basically as candy. I just eat them as snacks. They're amazing for hiking and so on. And so these are extra thick cut because they're not really meant to be reconstituted. They're just meant to eat like treats. Anyway, I'm pretty new to freeze drying, but uh, so far it's gone pretty well. So I wanted to show you what it's like and basically making healthy candy. It's super delicious. I just eat on it all day, especially the strawberries. Oh. Absolutely love the strawberries. Anyway, stick around. I'll show you my process and it uh, should be pretty fun. Like I mentioned, I'm pretty new to this. Uh, you can see I've still got a bunch of remnants of the previous batch that I did. So that's why I'm actually gonna try this parchment paper. I used a little bit of this in the last batch that I did and didn't have any issues at all. So it may be a good way to keep these clean. And pre-freezing it does save a lot of time. I watched a number of videos on how to freeze dry peaches and it's pretty consistent. People were saying it was taking about 48 hours. When I did my batch, it was only about 24 hours. So I'm just using this Reynolds parchment paper. And for these trays, this is the medium size freeze dryer, if I remember correctly. It is three and a half squares wide. I take this little piece and add it right here to the bottom. And yeah, these are really thick cuts. What I started doing by the end of cutting the peaches is I was cutting off the edges. So you can kind of see on this one, I'll build one side of the peach back up kind of. I just cut off the edges and then cut it into thirds. And I've already done this for one batch and it worked out great. And then in addition, when I stack them here into the tray, I alternate their direction. That way they kind of fold into each other and pre-freezing them seems to make a big difference. Now I have heard that you're not supposed to go above the lip of this. I don't know if that's true or not. You can see I have some stuff that's above the lip. So it's worked so far. Now, Harvest Rights sent out an email or something like that. They put out some sort of publication saying you don't have to put this uh, insulated cap or whatever, insulated sleeve, little frisbee thing, whatever you want to call it here in the front. And then when you close it, you have to close it further than you think. Make sure you twist all the way till it locks out. I need to make sure I close my drain valve over here. So that's closed now. Here it says, do not mix frozen with non-frozen trays. This is pre-frozen. And then it goes through this cycle. It realizes what's going on in here. I can see I got a complete good seal here around the edge and it's gonna suction down even more. So the last time I did it, that was pretty much it. And I came back 24 hours later and I had candy peaches. So here I've got my kilowatt meter. Just picked this up on Amazon. I'll have links down below for everything. Shows me the exact voltage that's being used. You can see it's only drawing 4.48 amps and the total wattage is 413 watts right now. And this purple button is really what I'm interested in. Once this whole cycle is done, this purple button will tell me exactly how many kilowatt hours it has consumed. Now, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, you wanna make sure you do that right now because I have a lot of other videos coming out and I already have a lot of videos that you may find helpful. If you wanna check those out, click the videos link down below. I do try to make playlists as well. And this is gonna be part of food preparedness. But I've got solar generators, firearms, flashlights, first aid, all sorts of stuff. And we're gonna be expanding that quite a bit. So make sure you subscribe. All of it, I paid out of my own pocket. This isn't sponsored or anything like that either. So. If you're finding this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. But the Titan Solar Generator is what I use to back up my house. It pretty much will run everything that I need to run except for 240 volt power. Now, I had an electrician install this box right here and I can run the majority of my house just from plugging my Titan right into that. So I'll have another video on that as well, but just make sure you're subscribed. That way you don't miss out on that information. It's going to be a lot of fun really helpful video. So this is gonna be in the pre-freezing stage for a little while. But real quickly, let me show you my last batch and show you how well that turned out. So I had one tray of strawberries. And so what I have found is that each tray equates to about a quarter of a gallon size bag. I don't know if that's accurate or not. That's what I found so far. And these are my favorite. These are just like straight up candy. And then this is about three trays of peaches. So you can see it's pretty much, you can make one gallon's worth of food in a single batch. But these break and you can see all that powder. There is zero moisture in here. A trick that I use when I'm camping is I use my lips when I'm looking for firewood, especially for sticks that are gonna get the fire going. I want something super dry. Of course you can snap it, it snaps real hard, then it's super dry and that's what this just did. But your lips are also extra sensitive to moisture or if you get any squeezy softness, then you know there's still moisture in it. And now I gotta take this with me and this is my snack while I'm working, while I'm hiking, doing whatever. I actually keep these in my truck now 
just if I need a snack while I'm driving around, this is what I take. Right now it's at 34 degrees. It's about to hit that 32 degree level. And right now it's pulling 360 watts. So we'll see what the difference is when this actually hits 32 degrees and how much harder it pulls. So it's been going for about an hour and 40 minutes. And it's hard to tell, but there is frost that's building up on the inner cylinder here. And so far it has used 0.61 kilowatt hours or 610 watt hours. It's at negative four degrees. It's been running for two hours and 20 minutes. And I'm really surprised it's only using 600 watts to run right now. So far, we're at 890 watt hours used. Seven and a half hours in, it's in the drying stage right now. I'm actually really surprised about how little power it's using. You can see them in there. They're still looking really big, but they're definitely shriveling up a little bit. They look drier. Wow, only 5,240 watt hours, 5.24 kilowatt hours, not bad at all. I went ahead and emptied this and got the peaches out. They were looking good. It was exactly at 23 hours. And in that time, we used 17.62 kilowatt hours. So at least for these peaches, let's say it's just 24 hours, okay? In theory, if I started the batch, say at like 7 a.m. and it's during the summer, I could run that batch all the way until about 7 p.m. getting power off the solar panels. So I'd effectively be looking at needing nine kilowatt hours to finish it off. So if I had five Titan batteries, then after it's dark, then I could actually finish this batch. So I'll have to try that in another video. So make sure you subscribe uh, for when I do that video as well. You get notified about it. But 23 hours, they were completely done. Tasting amazing, just like the others. And so now I've got two more batches to do. So let's do some quick math on this. A 20 pound box of these peaches cost me $29, or let's say it's $30 for easy math. For the electricity that is being consumed here at my house to run that is essentially $2. And so far, the two batches that I've made fit into a one gallon size bag. Actually, the most recent batch had a little bit more that went into the previous bag, so just over a gallon, but for easy math, let's say one gallon size bag. It was 12 ounces. Okay, so here's the math. The cheapest freeze-dried peaches that I could find were $40 per number 10 can. Each number 10 can had six ounces of freeze-dried peaches inside of it. A single batch produces two number 10 cans worth, or essentially 12 ounces. This is exactly 12 ounces of peaches right here. And it actually made more, but for easy math, 12 ounces, okay? so. I can make two number 10 cans per batch. And I can do four batches for a 20 pound box. So that brings me up to a total of $38 for four batches, which is the equivalent of about eight or more number 10 cans. So if I just wanted to buy eight number 10 cans, it would cost me $320 because 40 times eight is 320. But instead, it cost me a total of $38 to make that equivalent so for a savings of about $280, I made the same as what I could have bought for $320. There's definitely different prices, but the point is that if I'm actively using the freeze dryer, I am absolutely gonna get my money back. So that's what I plan on doing pretty much is just making fruit candy, making pre-made meals, essentially making my own mountain house meals. Yes, you do have to factor in buying more oil. I'm actually think I'm just gonna go buy the oil-less pump now, because I just don't want to deal with changing the oil. It's definitely cheaper up front to just go with the normal oil pump, but I seriously think that the oil-less pump is the way to go. Now, having done freeze dryer stuff, I do think it's a good investment. If you had asked me six months ago, I would have said absolutely not, it doesn't make any sense. But I do think that it is better to get a base of food storage, say three, six months, whatever it is, for each person in your immediate family or whoever you're in charge of, and then look at getting something like a freeze dryer. Because it is, it's not really a lot of work, like cutting the peaches is kind of a pain, or preparing whatever meal, you know, to the right volume, so that way you can put it in there, that's kind of a pain, but the cost savings are amazing. So I'd rather, just get something as a baseline and then be able to add on to it whatever my own personal stuff is. That way, if anything does happen, then I know I've got something I can hold on to. But as time goes on, as I get food, as things go on sale or whatever, I can just freeze dry it and make it last pretty much forever. Thanks for watching. I truly do appreciate it. None of this stuff is sponsored. If you found it helpful in any way, please consider liking, subscribing, especially leaving a comment that really helps YouTube recognize that people are enjoying this video. The peaches weren't supplied. Nothing in this video is sponsored at all. I really do hope you found this helpful. If you did, go check out my other videos. Above all else, be prepared.
I'll see you in the next video.